stop. All right, thank you. Hey guys and welcome back to Clearview Driving. Today I'm doing a mock test with Alex. Now Alex has been learning to drive with me for the past sort of 20 hours or so. We've done a few mock tests. Yeah. This is the first one that's recorded. Now his test is coming up in about just under three weeks time. Um, but you have done one test before. Yeah, in Greenford uh, last July. Which Yeah, which is yeah. a while ago. Yeah. But now this is a completely different test centre. Yeah. It's a little bit different. Yeah. All right, so um, you know what's involved in a mock test. I'm not going to go into what's what's there. But, um, yeah, just needs to be safe drive. It's going to last about 35 minutes or so at most. We're going to do one manoeuvre, maybe the emergency stop. All right, um, before we get started, could you tell me where would you find the coolant and how do you check it's at the right level? So pop the hood and there'll be, uh, the, you'll, you'll see the coolant mm -hmm. thing and there'll be a level on it. Mm -hmm. um, so you should be able to tell because I think it's kind of see-through, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You should be able to just tell from looking at it there if that if it's on the right level. Okay, yeah. So yeah, you need to make sure it's between that min and max level. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. All right, okay, whenever you're ready, we'll get started. For anyone that's new to the channel, don't forget to like the video, comment down below and subscribe if you haven't already. And thank you for everyone for all your support. All right, we're going to get started. As we're going forward, there's a van partially blocking the road and then the driver steps out into the road. Alex deals with this really well by slowing down and switching back into first gear. You can see the driver is inviting us to pass. Make sure that there are no other hazards before you continue. As we turn into the new road, Alex notices the hazard straight away and checks his mirrors to move right. As there's enough space to move through the middle of the road, we didn't need to signal in this case. As we went forward at the traffic lights, the lights started changing when we were quite close. It was no longer safe to stop at this point. The vehicle ahead is indicating to turn left. The road is quite narrow so they had to slow down quite a bit. Alex deals with this really well by slowing down and switching back down to second gear and also maintains a good distance ahead. As 
we're going forward, this is now a 20 miles per hour zone. There's a gateway sign on the left and right hand side of the road as we're going forward, as well as the sign printed on the floor. After this point, there will be signs throughout to remind you that it's a 20 miles per hour zone. At the roundabout turn left is the first exit. Here's a prime example of why it's not safe to enter just because the traffic on the right is entering. The silver car on the right entered the roundabout but we ended up waiting. The gap was safe for them as they were simply crossing the path of the traffic on the roundabout whereas we're actually moving in front of that traffic. So don't enter just because you see other people are entering the roundabout. Always make sure it's safe for you. Both lanes go ahead on this roundabout, but it's safer to stay in the left-hand lane to follow the road ahead as it's the position for normal driving and also if you start in the right-hand lane you may end up getting stuck behind traffic that's turning right in the roundabout which leads to more congestion. Using the vehicle in front, I'd like you to demonstrate how you would carry out the parallel park exercise. So yeah. pull up alongside this vehicle in the road, then reverse back and finish within two car lengths and try not to touch the pavement. Okay. okay. Alex starts off his manoeuvre really nicely by looking around and then turning left when we're parallel, then turning right at about a 45 degree angle. After this point, he doesn't look around towards his right. When the back tyre gets close to the pavement, he turns right again. Now we are parked really nicely, but the tyres are still facing in the road. He gets marked down for observation with this manoeuvre. Straightening up the tyres does not get counted as a fault. Okay, thank you. Drive off when you're ready.
left again. Once we turn right into the new road, Alex thinks that he's straightened up the steering wheel, but in fact the tyres are still facing towards the right. As we moved off, he did correct this straight away, so this is not a fault. Leading up to the parked vehicles ahead, Alex checks his mirrors towards the right to move into the middle of the road early. That way he's able to leave a good clearance from the parked vehicles on the left hand side. Always aim to be in the middle of the road at least two car lengths before the parked vehicle so that you're already passing them in the middle and not moving up to the vehicle. Driving down a high street always keep scanning both sides of the road, especially when there are lots of parked vehicles, as there is a higher chance of a hazard developing. As we're going forward, there is a pedestrian who suddenly runs into the road behind the bus. As we're waiting at this roundabout to enter, we need somebody on the main road to turn in towards our junction, but you also need to watch the second car in case they're too close. Alex waits for a safe gap before entering. There's temporary roadworks ahead which are blocking the right hand side of the road. There's also a sign which reads cycle lane closed. Alex ends up getting a clearance fault with the cones for the roadworks as he's trying to avoid using the cycle lane as it has a solid line. But as the cycle lane is closed we should have driven over the solid line. It is a 30 miles per hour road, but with the traffic on the right and the solid line, 
with the narrow gap ahead, it's not safe to drive up to that speed. So always drive at a speed that's safe according to what's happening on the road. As we go around this bend, there's a lorry in the right-hand lane who starts signaling to switch lanes quite suddenly. Alex deals with this really well by slowing down and switching into second gear. It's quite hard to see the indicator on the lorry as it's quite small, especially when it's really sunny. There is a giveaway line just as we pass the traffic lights, but nobody should be on the right when we have green lights, but it's a good idea to check regardless. The island in the middle of the road makes it two separate crossings, so we didn't need to stop for the pedestrian on the right hand side. Take the next road on your right please. On approach to this right turn, Alex gets a minor fault for hesitation. We could have gone before the van that's ahead of us as we had enough time to turn. The van was in fact waiting for us to turn as well. As we got to the junction, Alex was initially assessing whether the pedestrians were going to cross the road.
walk up on the left along here, please. That's great there, thank you. So shortly I'm going to get you to carry out the emergency stop. Okay, so as you're driving down this road, I'm going to make sure it's nice and clear. You're going to see me looking around, make sure it's nice and safe. I'm going to give you this signal, stop. As soon as you get that signal, I want you to stop the car as quickly and as safely as possible. Okay, okay? I will make sure it's safe before yeah. I give you that signal. Okay, all right, drive off when you're ready. Carrying out the emergency stop, if somebody turns up in front or behind, the examiner will wait until it's safe before they give you that signal. They may even ask you to pull over and park again so that there's no one around. If you could just pull into this space before the van here. Okay, and then just uh, move off again. Just loads yeah. of people turned up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Might be your lucky day. <laughs> when carrying up the emergency stop, always try to brake firm and then put the clutch down so that you can stop the car quickly. Alex puts the brake and the clutch down together, but he does brake quite firm, so we manage to stop really quickly. Even if you put the brake on and you forget about the clutch completely, this would not give you a minor fault. Your car will stall, but you will stop. All right, so we're still doing the emergency stop, yeah, okay? okay. Stop. All right, thank you. I'm not going to get you to do that again. Okay. Drive off and you're ready. Stop. All right, thank you. I'm not going to get you to do that again. Okay. Drive off and you're ready. Always remember to check over your shoulders before moving off after an emergency stop. If you don't look around and you move off, you will get a serious fault for this and you will fail your driving test. And at the end of this road turn right please. <laughs> Let's switch off the engine. All right, brilliant. That's the end of the driving test. That's the man's song. What's that noise? <laughs> all right, so that's the end of your driving test. How was the drive for you today? Um, it's all right. Just quite a few surprises popping out of the road. Lots of hazards today. Lots and lots of yeah. them. We had loads earlier as well. Um, yeah, that would be a pass. Okay. That was a good. That was a really good drive. Thanks. Now we've done a few mock tests, so we've had a few passes, mm. we've had a few sudden surprises yeah. in some of them, but um, no, generally overall really nice drive. I'm just going to go over the key points yeah. that we could have improved on. So the first one, you know, the road marking on that, keep clear, you're kind yeah, of okay. overhanging it. Yeah, as soon as I started to go forward, I, I should have waited. <laughs> I, think, I think my coughing at that point probably added to yeah, the so. pressure of what was going on in the car. Okay, um, the other one that kind of stood out for me was your hesitation with that right turn. Yeah, I probably could So what happened there? Um, I think because, you know, the, the light was changing, so then that guy, he was just staying there. Yeah, um, so he was I, actually waiting for you. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. So as we got there, initially that traffic light was red, I, and I know yeah, those yeah. pedestrians were there, so you're watching them, but none of them were actually interested in mm. crossing. Light's still red, I would have just turned in. Okay. And then as the light, light in front started to flash, you're expecting him to go. Yeah. But he was mm -hmm. waiting. Yeah. I think he even kind of invited us in okay. a little bit. Right. 
and you carried on waiting, so a bit of hesitation on that account. Um, earlier, well, you know where the roadworks were, where you said, oh, it's a 30, but I don't think I'll be able to drive 30. Yeah. So there was that roadworks. Just before we went in, there was a sign on the left which said, um, cycle lane is... What was the sign? Uh, was it like closed or...? Yeah, that's it, yeah. So yeah. The, the sign said, cycle lane is closed, which means, as we're going forward, you're being forced into that cycle lane. And there was a nice solid line, which obviously we have to now drive over. You were really close to the cones on the right. Yeah. Did was, you notice it? Yeah, I did. Yeah. So you got a clearance on that one with the cones because yeah, you were trying to avoid the cycle lane when we should, in fact, be using it at that point. Um, then the use of mirrors change speed. This was, you know, that zebra crossing with the lady on the other side. Yeah. We yeah. had a bit of a harsh break come in there. Yeah, because I realised as well. There's an island there as well, so I don't actually have to stop for her. Right? Yeah, and plus because of where we were, even if she started, like you said, started crossing, it was alright to continue yeah, with yeah. the island. Um, your reverse park was really good. Just, um, I think you could have looked around a little bit more near okay. the second half. Like at the very beginning, lots of good looking around observation, all round, blind spots checked. Nobody turned up, but just as we're heading back and you're kind of looking here, just have a little look to the right and mm, that's it. That would okay. have been grand. Um, so it didn't matter that? My wheels were... Yeah, no. That's all right. Well, I mean, I should So that's not that. actually, yeah, that's not actually a fault. That was more of an advisory one. Yeah, you, yeah. you you were waiting there at the end and you were like, yeah, I'm done. And I was like, okay. Yeah. And then when you moved, your wheel turned already. Yeah. But yeah, that's not a fault. Because I asked about that previously, because I know I've previously marked it down as a fault. Yeah. But that's not a fault, but it was more advisory yeah. to try and get the wheel straightened. Um, I think that's it. Were there any other points that stuck out for you? Um... It's reflecting on your face. I've seen yeah, you right. way now. Um, no, I think it was it was okay. You know, just some things. I think um, just, uh, like we mentioned earlier, just a bit more planning ahead. Mm -hmm. um, there were lots of other hazards we were having to, to yeah. deal with, like that lorry for one. You know, at the traffic lights. Yeah. yeah. I was thinking, oh, has he seen the signal? Because the lorry signal was so small, the yeah. little LED little strip. But yeah, you noticed that you dealt with it nicely. But we've had um, lots of things, kind of developing in front of us today yeah, yeah. but overall really well done okay yes. it was a pass definitely um and the brown were good with lots of them sorry lost my lid i'll have to get it later okay yeah. all right so that's the end of our uh, mock test video today hopefully it's been useful for you guys as well don't forget to like the video comment down below and follow me on all my socials. You've got TikTok, Instagram, and obviously you've got YouTube as well. But um, bye for now.